Acts Lesson 11, Paul Taken Prisoner. Our lesson today is from Acts 20 through 26. We will hear the exciting story about a man who falls asleep. We will learn about the prophecy given by Agabus and about Paul's return to Jerusalem. We will find out about a plot to kill Paul. But first, let's listen in as Otto talks to his teacher about making sacrifices. Hi, teacher. You'll never believe this. In church last week, I saw someone that was sleeping during the pastor's sermon. That happens sometimes, Otto. Some people make great sacrifices to get to church on Sunday morning. What's a sacrifice? When someone makes a sacrifice, it means they pay a high cost. Oh, so you think that person that fell asleep doesn't shop at Walmart? No. What made you think of that? Because if they pay a high cost, then they don't shop at Walmart because prices are dropping at Walmart. You're not quite following me, Otto. When someone makes a sacrifice, it doesn't always involve money. They may sacrifice their time or their health or their freedom or their life. Yikes! What does that have to do with sleeping in church? Some people work all night, and when Sunday morning comes, instead of going home to sleep, they come to church. That is making a sacrifice. Oh, I get it. It's important to them to be in church, so they sacrifice their sleep in order to be there. Exactly. In our lesson today, we are going to hear about a man that fell asleep while Paul was preaching. It's a story you will never forget. Why won't I ever forget it? Because it's such an amazing story. I can't see how a story about someone falling asleep could even be close to amazing. You just listen, and I'm sure you will find it amazing. Okay, bring it on before I fall asleep waiting. A riot had broken out in the city of Ephesus because the silversmiths were angry. Paul had been planning to leave Ephesus even before the riot broke out, and now he was finally able to set out for home, visiting churches along the way. Paul found out about some Jews that were planning to ambush him on his way back home. So instead of sailing from Ephesus, Paul traveled by land to Macedonia and then sailed from there across the sea to Troas. Paul stayed in Troas for several days, encouraging the believers. On the night before Paul was to leave Troas, he met with the believers in a large room on the third floor of a building. Paul preached until midnight, knowing he would probably never see these believers again. While he was preaching, a young man named Eutychus sat in an open window listening. As it got later into the night, Eutychus got sleepy. He should have known how dangerous it was to go to sleep in a third-story window. Eutychus got sleepier and sleepier, and as he drifted off into sleep, he slumped over and fell out of the third-story window. The believers rushed down the stairs to see if Eutychus was all right. Paul threw his arms around the young man and said to the sad believers, Don't worry, he is still alive. They took the young man away alive and were greatly comforted that he was not injured. When Paul arrived at Caesarea, he was greeted by his friends and a prophet named Agabus. Agabus had walked from Jerusalem to Caesarea to give Paul a message from the Lord. Agabus took Paul's belt and tied it around his own hands and feet. Pointing to his bound hands and feet, Agabus said, This is what the Holy Spirit says. So shall the man be who owns this belt. He will be bound and delivered to the Gentiles in Jerusalem. When the believers heard this, they were very sad and upset and begged Paul not to go to Jerusalem. We read about Paul's reaction to this in Acts 21-23. Then Paul answered, What do you mean by weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. 
When they realized they could not change Paul's mind, they simply said, The Lord's will be done. When Paul arrived in Jerusalem, the believers there were very glad to see him. Paul told the believers all of the wonderful things that God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. When the believers heard it, they glorified God. Paul enjoyed fellowship with the believers in Jerusalem for about a week. At that time, Paul was recognized by some unbelieving Jews from Asia Minor. Paul had taught in their synagogue, and they had not accepted his teaching. They hated Paul because he taught that Gentiles could become followers of God without keeping Jewish rules. To arouse the people, these Jews began shouting, This is the man who teaches men everywhere against the Jews and the law and the temple. The enemies of Jesus joined the mob and rushed to seize Paul. They pulled Paul this way and that way and beat Paul, trying to kill him. Someone ran to the Roman captain and reported the trouble. When the captain finally got through the crowd with his soldiers, the angry mob stopped beating Paul. The Roman captain ordered his soldiers to put two chains on Paul. Then he asked the crowd, Who is he, and what has he done? Some in the mob were shouting one thing and some another. The captain was not able to hear what people were saying because of all the noise, so he ordered that Paul be taken to the castle. When Paul got to the steps, he had to be carried because of the mob's violence, for many people were shouting, Kill him! Kill him! When Paul got to the top of the steps, he asked for permission to speak to the mob. The captain gave him permission, and Paul motioned with his hand to the people. When they were quiet, Paul began speaking to them in the Hebrew language. The Jews loved this language and listened closely. I am a Jewish man, born in Tarsus, and brought up at the feet of Gamaliel, and educated in our law. Being eager to follow God's way, just as you are, I persecuted believers, putting some in prison and having some of them killed. On the way to Damascus, I saw a bright light and heard a voice, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Then I answered, Who are you? I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. My eyes were opened, and I became a witness of Jesus Christ to all men of what I had seen and heard. When the Jews at Jerusalem wanted to kill me for believing in Jesus, the Lord told me, Depart, for I will send you to the Gentiles. When the people heard Paul mention the word Gentile, they would not listen any more. Wipe this person off the earth! It's a disgrace for him to live! The captain ordered that Paul be brought into the castle. The next day, Paul was brought before the chief rulers of the Jews. Even they could not agree what to do with Paul. Some wanted to set him free, and some wanted to put him to death. The rulers caused so much commotion that the captain feared that Paul may be torn apart by them, and he had Paul taken away. The following night, the Lord appeared to Paul, and we read what he said in Acts 23:11. But the following night, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as you have testified for me in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness at Rome. When daylight came, more than forty Jews agreed together that they would not eat or drink until they had killed Paul. These men went to the Jewish leaders and said, Make a request to the Roman captain to have Paul brought down to you, as if you are going to investigate his case more thoroughly. We will wait along the way and kill him before he gets here. But Paul's nephew heard about the ambush and entered the castle and reported it to Paul. Paul told one of the soldiers guarding him, Take this young man to the captain. He has something to report to him. So the soldier brought Paul's nephew to the captain and said, The prisoner Paul asked me to bring this young man to you because he has something to report. The captain took the young man aside and asked privately, What is it that you have to report? 
Paul's nephew told him about the ambush and the forty men that had vowed to kill Paul. The captain dismissed the boy and said, Don't tell anyone that you have informed me about this. The captain immediately spoke to two of his men and said, Get two hundred soldiers ready, along with seventy horsemen and two hundred spearmen. We will go to Caesarea at nine o'clock tonight. That night the soldiers and horsemen and spearmen escorted Paul to the city of Caesarea. At Caesarea they presented Paul to Governor Felix. Felix said to Paul, I will give you a hearing whenever your accusers get here. Then he ordered that Paul be taken to the palace and kept under guard. Paul's enemies were angry when they found out that the Roman captain had sent Paul out of Jerusalem. After five days, the Jewish leader and a lawyer came down to Caesarea to present their case against Paul. The lawyer began to lash out against Paul, saying, We have found this man to be a plague and a ringleader among the Nazarenes. Paul began to speak, addressing Felix with respect, explaining how he was a worshiper of God and honored the law of Moses. As Felix listened to Paul speak, he knew that the Jews did not have any real charges to bring against Paul. When Paul finished sharing his story, Governor Felix said, When the Roman captain comes down, I will decide your case. He commanded a Roman soldier to keep watch over Paul, but he allowed Paul's friends to come and go as they pleased. Several days later, Felix sent for Paul. He and his wife wanted to hear the gospel of Christ. As Paul spoke, Felix became convicted of his own sin and began trembling. He said to Paul, Leave me for now. When I have more time, I will send for you. Two years passed, and still Paul was a prisoner in Caesarea. Felix had called for Paul often, hoping to be bribed to set Paul free. Even though he knew Paul did not deserve to be a prisoner, he refused to release him. As soon as the new governor, Festus, arrived in Jerusalem, the Jewish leaders began to tell him about Paul. They tried to get Festus to send for Paul. If Paul were brought to Jerusalem, they planned to ambush him along the way and kill him. But Festus said, I'm going back to Caesarea. If you want to accuse Paul, come down to Caesarea. Ten days later, Paul was brought before Festus and the Jews in Caesarea. The Jews brought many serious charges against Paul, but they could not prove them. Paul made his defense against the charges and said, I have not sinned against the Jewish law, nor the temple, nor against Caesar. Festus wanted to please the Jews, so he said to Paul, Are you willing to go up to Jerusalem to be tried on these charges? Paul replied, I am here at Caesar's judgment seat where I ought to be tried. If I have done anything worthy of death, I am willing to die. I appeal to Caesar. Festus knew that every Roman citizen had a right to appear before Caesar, the emperor of the Roman Empire. To Paul's request, Festus had no choice but to reply, You have appealed to Caesar, and to Caesar you shall go. Before Paul was sent to Rome to appear before Caesar, King Agrippa heard about Paul's imprisonment and wanted to talk to Paul. King Agrippa listened patiently to Paul's testimony of salvation and his explanation of the Jews' persecution. When Paul had finished, King Agrippa said, Paul, you almost persuade me to be a Christian. I wish I could persuade not only you, but everyone here, Paul replied. As King Agrippa, Festus, and the others left the judgment hall, King Agrippa said to Festus, this man has done nothing to deserve death or even imprisonment. He could be set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. God had a plan to spread the gospel through the Western world, and Paul was part of that plan. Paul was willing to do whatever God wanted him to do and was not frustrated when he was put in prison. God used Paul to spread the gospel to the Western world, and the effect of the gospel can still be seen today. 
Sometimes we look at situations and see problems, but God has a plan that often we cannot see. We can get a glimpse of some of the reasons God allowed Paul to be imprisoned. Paul was protected from those who wanted to harm him while he was in prison. Paul wrote the prison epistles while in prison, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. Because Paul appealed to Caesar, Paul was able to be a witness in Rome and even to the Roman emperor. Paul shared his testimony of salvation many times in these chapters of Acts. This is a reminder to us to be ready and willing to share our testimony of salvation. Some people who won't listen to anything else about God will listen to your testimony. Be ready to share your testimony of salvation.